The French have lots of vegetable dishes, but real vegetarian dishes, not really. That's because they think bacon is a vegetable, and they put it in everything. And if it's not bacon, then it's duck fat or pork fat or something that makes it impossible for vegetarians to eat. I'm making a tomato and aubergine gratin, a warm lentil salad with chèvre and walnuts, mushroom parmentier, it's like a mushroom shepherd's pie, and roasted beets, they're almost like candy, cooked with their greens. These are all great vegetarian dishes that make meat moot. <laughs> A lot of vegetarian friends and sometimes people surprise you when they come over by announcing it's a new thing they're trying out so whenever I'm having a dinner party I like to have at least one dish that means I'm safe so if someone says they can't eat my roasted whatever I've got a backup a great vegetarian dish from the south of France is an eggplant gratin with tomato it's not surprising actually that it's a vegetarian dish from the south because in the south there are more vegetables, there are more grains in the diet and uh, lentils and things like that. It tends to be less meat oriented than the north. So I'm going to make the tomato part first. I'm just heating my pan and a little olive oil. Just slice the onions because they'll cook down. Gently cook the onions till they're soft. I'm also going to add some garlic, three cloves, two bay leaves, some garlic, and another thing I really like, which is not French, which is Italian. But I learned about it in France and I've become addicted to it. They're called pepperoncini. In France they call them bird's tongues. They're really small dried up peppers, but do they pack a punch? One isn't going to overwhelm the flavor, so that's okay. I have lots of tomatoes. They just need a rough chop. I'm not taking the seeds out or anything fancy because I want that liquid. salt and pepper. I want this to be a nice, thick, chunky mixture of stewed tomatoes. Not thinned down like a sauce for pasta, but really nice and hearty. We need the oven on. Hot, hot. 450 for the eggplant. It's such a beautiful vegetable. And I'm just going to cut it about pinky width thick. Brush them on both sides with olive oil and lay them in a pan. And then salt and pepper. So I can put them in the oven until they're nice and golden on one side and then I'll flip them. Now a few other things that go in this mix are some uh, breadcrumbs. And I like chili powder. I know I already have a pepperoncino in there, but somehow this adds just a little extra something. However untraditional it may be, just a teaspoon. I need about a cup of crumbs, I'd say. I'm also going to want some Parmesan cheese. I need to flip those eggplants. Okay, now this is an assembly job at this point. I'm just pulling out the bay leaves and actually I have this basil plant and so I might as well use some. Let's build. I just put a little tomato on the bottom of my dish and then put a layer of eggplant in the bottom. And then a nice juicy layer of tomatoes on top. And this is my 
crumb and chili pepper mixture, a layer of that over top. This will help absorb some of the excess liquid from the tomatoes too. Now another layer of eggplant. And then layer on another layer of tomato. And lots of Parmesan cheese too. Then you get nice crunchy bits from the crumbs and tasty salty golden bits from the cheese. And that needs about 20 minutes to half an hour. Everything will be cooked and melded together and the top will be all nice and golden and crunchy. So cheery and colorful. I could have this for lunch anytime. Lamb chop or no lamb chop. Mmm. I like the hot pepper. I have another great dish that my vegetarian friends love. It's French lentils with walnuts and chèvre. vegetarian dishes. Not much is better than that. There aren't a million of them, but the ones that there are are really very tasty. I'm making a lentil dish, and these go with walnuts and goat cheese and red onion. Now before you get turned off, these are special lentils. They're lentilles du puits, which are lentils from France, and they're little tiny lentils with a delicious taste. And what's great about them too is that they keep their shape. They just have a nice little bite to them. Now, we're gonna get the lentils started first. One generous cup. I'm using a cup and a third of water on the lentils. And you don't season them yet because it makes legumes tough if you put salt in them while they cook. And thyme. Just bring them to a gentle simmer and let them cook until they're just tender. Now, I'm going to toast these walnuts. And I'm going to toast these in the oven. The oven's at 350. I'll put those in in a second. Now, a pan. I don't know if I need one this big, but oh well. I'm using red onion. You can use a plain onion, but I like the slight sweetness of red onion, plus it gives nice color. It's gonna pop these walnuts in. I'm gonna flavor this dish with walnut oil, ultimately, but I'm not gonna fry the onions in walnut oil because it has a very low smoking point. Just a regular olive oil is good. of garlic cloves. This one's huge. Once the onions are soft, you can add the garlic. Just add the garlic for a minute because you don't want it to burn. I'll just turn off those onions and get these out before eek. There. Now when you open the oven door and you just get hit in the face with a scent of walnuts, chances are good they're done. Get a nice plate. So everything's set up. Now these are crackling on me. The water's gone. Just pluck out the herbs. Let's have a taste. They just have a little bite left. I love them. I could just eat them with a spoon right out of the pot. Mmm. These onions and garlics are nice and soft. I'm going to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. It's kind of like a dressing, really, because it's balsamic vinegar and walnut oil going on the lentils, and just enough to coat them. I'm not cooking them in here. I'm going to add the lentils. 
my lovely lentils. I'm not cooking them and I'm not overheating the walnut oil. I'm just turning it so it's warm. Now, we didn't season it, so we have to do that now. Now, I'm going to add chevre. Nice, fresh pinches of goat cheese. So if you want to, you can add a little olive oil. And they should be all nice and glistening. The humble lentil suddenly becomes exotic, I think. Then you just scatter over pieces of goat cheese, crumble it in your fingers. Be generous, but remember that it's the walnuts that are the base, and then these are garnishes, so you don't want too much goat cheese overwhelming everything else. And then you scatter over nuts, willy-nilly. But just to make the plate look really nice on the table, comme ça, just put a little thyme spring on the side, because that's what's in it. While I'm at it, drizzle over a little more walnut oil and some pepper. Very healthy, very French, and very tasty all together with goat cheese, chevre, walnuts, and red onion. Mmm, and the vinegar is good too. They're my favorite lentils. Next, I'm making a dish of mushroom parmentier, which is like shepherd's pie, only without the shepherd. I cook French food all the time, but it doesn't mean I stop when people who don't eat meat are coming over. There aren't a lot of vegetarian dishes in French cuisine, but there are enough. I'm making mushroom parmentier. The mushrooms make a really nice meaty bottom, especially when you mix them up, and they're really good with potatoes on top. Now these are floury potatoes, which means that they're the kind that will mash easily. Just cut them into chunks. And then, whoop. into the pot. And I'm just going to add about an inch of water just to steam them in there. Just add a little salt. Now, the mushrooms. I have oyster mushrooms, these nice white ones, and shiitake. These are already cleaned. So I'll just cut them in big shapes because they shrink anyway. And the oyster mushrooms, leave the small ones like that, and then you can rip any that are too big. Now, I'm going to add an onion. You can use a white onion, a purple onion. You can use shallot instead of onion. Whatever's sort of in the bin. There we go. Now I need a little bit of butter and a hot saute pan. Oh, and a little olive oil, too just to keep the butter from burning. I think about a tablespoon of each will be good. Just get the onions a little soft first. There will be garlic. I think I'll put in three cloves. Now, champignon. A little salt and pepper. I need a hot oven to finish the dish afterwards. 400 or 425 around there. Mash these potatoes. I'm just going to drain off the excess water. A bit of butter and a little milk. They're nice and creamy and very tasty. Now these mushrooms, these look nice and golden now and they're all softened. I can just add the garlic 
for a minute. I want a little chopped thyme too. And then to get those good bits off the bottom, about half a cup of red wine. And let that cook down. And as it does, just scrape up the bits from the bottom so you get a nice little gravy. And you need a bit of stock, also about half a cup. This is vegetable stock. And then, you make a thing called beurre manier, which basically means kneaded butter. And kneaded butter is just butter, and an equal amount of flour, and just pinch it together. And the purpose of this is to thicken the sauce, and to get the flour in there without it clumping. And just at the end, you check the seasonings and add some chopped parsley, because it does need a bit of green in there. So, just need a gratin dish. And then just spill this nice meaty mushroom mixture. Nice and garlicky, and they smell of wine and onions. It's it really hearty. I'm just having a little thought that it would be good to have some cheese in those potatoes too. Only not Parmesan this time, but some Comté, or you could use Gruyere too. Stir them around so they get a nice whipped look. And then you spoon this onto the mushroom mixture. So that needs just about 15 or 20 minutes. And it will get nice and golden on top and just heat through again and be ready to eat. I can see right down through the side, it's all bubbling hot. Grandmother made it. I love how rich it is. I just need a big glass of red wine and a little salad. It's perfect. There's just one last thing I want to show you. Roasted beets, roasted until they're just like candy and with their greens. I'm making all French vegetarian dishes. This one isn't really a vegetarian dish. It's just vegetables, it's beets, but it's so good, you have to know about it. It's beets roasted until they're candied, almost caramelized wedges, and then served with their greens, cooked separately. So just cutting off the snouts. I'm taking the greens off, but I'm gonna cook them separately and serve them all together. And I'm leaving a little bit of green on top of the beets. I've given them a good scrub, but not peeled them. Now this is ultra, ultra simple. Olive oil to make them glisten. And butter. And then salt and pepper. My oven's hot to 425 because that's gonna make them nice and caramelized on the edges. Okay, now the beet greens. I love the beet greens. I can't believe that anyone could ever possibly chop them off and throw them out. Just give them a quick rinse. Just cut them in half, I think. So just before the beets are done, you can do the greens to serve alongside. And I've split them roughly between the leaf and the stem because the stems are really good too and they look so nice. Get those going first. Nice and soft, that's great. And then, add the leaves, a little salt, pepper. Just turn them a few times to wilt the greens. I also got some itty bitty baby beet greens. Look at those, fuchsia. I love those long-legged bits of burgundy and pink and the bright green of the leaves. And they look fantastic right alongside the beets, which I'm sure are done. This 
smell so sweet already. Oof. They get really dark and almost blackened and wizened a little bit, but that's because they're so candied and crisp on the outside. And then serve them all together. See, it's nice to leave the little bit of greens on the top too, because it gives them little tails, makes them look more fun. They are like candy. You wouldn't even know it was a beet, actually. Beets transformed, and almost the best part is this crunchy and, excuse me while I just finish it off. I've made tomato and aubergine gratin, layers of grilled eggplant with chunky stewed tomatoes gratinate with Parmesan cheese, lentils with walnuts, red onion, and chèvre with a balsamic vinaigrette, parmentier de champignon, or shepherd's pie, only made meatless with mushrooms, and roasted beetroot, sweet caramelized rubies served with their sauteed greens. Even if you're vegetarian, you can still go French.